Welcome to the Organic Chemistry Podcast, Dr. Brian Lloyd's Scribblecast of Organic Chemistry Lectures and Solutions to Homework Problems. In this Scribblecast lecture, we're going to introduce carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids are compounds that contain a carboxyl group. That is a carbonyl group, the C double bond O here, with an OH or hydroxyl attached to the carbonyl group. Combine these two together and you have the functional group known as carboxylic acid. The R group may be hydrogen or an alkyl group. So R can equal alkyl. or hydrogen. Fine. Now we're going to begin our look at carboxylic acids by delving into their nomenclature. Much of the IUPAC nomenclature has already been covered last semester, but let us begin with a review of the IUPAC nomenclature for carboxylic acids. Now, carboxylic acids are named as alkanes in which the E ending of the ane is dropped and replaced with oic acid. For example, if I have a two-carbon chain with a carboxylic acid functional group on it, a two-carbon alkane is known as ethane. If I drop the E and add oic acid, I have ethanoic acid. Substituents are numbered from the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid is one of the highest priority groups by IUPAC nomenclature, and if you have some kind of substituent off of a carboxylic acid chain, carboxylic acids usually are numbered one, and you count from that carbon to the substituent. So here we have two iodo, Three-carbon chain is a propane, drop the E, add, oops, add uh, oic acid, and you have propanoic acid. You'll notice I'm not saying propan one oic. It would be perfectly correct to say propan one oic acid, but there is no need to. To be a carboxylic acid, I must be at the end of the chain. As a result, carboxylic acids are always one. Uh, unless, of course, there's two carboxylic acids, and then you have one at each end of the chain. So this could be called propan one oic that's perfectly fine, or you can drop the one since it has to be one, and you can just add oic, propanoic acid. Other examples of long-chain carboxylic acids are We look, just finished looking at alpha-beta unsaturated aldehydes and ketones. How about an alpha-beta unsaturated carboxylic acid? 1, 2, 3, this is a propane with a double bond. It's a propene, a propenoic, and it's a carbon 2, so prop 2-ene-oic. Acid. There we go. And acid is a separate word. If you have two carboxylic acids in a chain, such as in this case, One, two, three, four. This is a butane with a carbon two and ene. So this is a but two ene. Now what's interesting is we have two carboxylic acids. So this becomes a but two ene dioic. Now you could say one four, but the carboxylic acid has to be one four. Butuene dioic acid. And acid is a separate word. 
Lastly, how do you name, under IUPAC conditions, carboxylic acids that have rings? That is, you have the CO2H off of a ring. Well, this is very similar to what we've seen in aldehydes. Remember, in aldehyde, the way you name this molecule was a cyclohexane carbaldehyde. If you drop the H and make that an OH, this becomes a cyclohexane carboxylic acid. So the alkane of the ring is named cyclohexane as a full alkane. Then you add the word carboxylic. And then a separate word, acid. So cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Now this only applies if the CO2H is directly bound to the ring. If there was CH2s in between the ring and the CO2H, then you'd name it as a long chain alkane with a carboxylic acid, and the cyclohexane would become a cyclohexyl substituent. This is a quick summary of some of the IUPAC nomenclature we have covered in the past, but we're going to move on now and take a look at some of the common nomenclature. Common nomenclature of carboxylic acids. Now this common nomenclature, we're going to apply to a series of molecules and we're going to look at it with regards as well in comparison to the IUPAC name. We're going to start with the simplest carboxylic acid, a CO2H that has a hydrogen off of it. And we're going to give both the IUPAC and the common names. So the IUPAC for one carbon chain is based on methane and is methanoic acid. The common name is formic acid. I believe comes from the Latin formica, which means ants. If you like, formic acid is that which is excreted from red ants and was isolated from such. Now we're going to start lengthening a chain. We have a CH3, C double bond O, OH. Two carbons is an ethane, hence ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is called acetic acid, which comes from the Latin acetum, or vinegar. Acetic acid is the main constituent in vinegar, being present at, I believe it's around 12%. Continuing lengthening the chain, we have CH3, CH2, C double bond O, H3 carbon chain is a propane, which means we have a propanoic. Propanoic acid. Propanoic, common name, is propionic. Propionic comes from two words. Protos, meaning first, pion, meaning fat. Remember fatty acids or fats or long-chain carboxylic acids, since this is three carbons. It suggests that we are getting the buildup of a long carbon chain heading towards a fatty acid, hence for the term first fat or propionic. CH3. Now we're going to put two CH2s, so I'll put them in brackets. C 
C double bond O, O H. Four carbons, butane becomes a butanoic acid. Butanoic acid, common name is butyric, from the Latin butyrum. Butyric acid is a key constituent of rancid butter, and butyrum is Latin for butter. Now we certainly can start incorporating some double bonds. Let's look at some common names. If we have a CH2 with a double bond. CH, CO2H. As I po pointed out earlier, this one, two, this is prop two enoic acid. In fact, the ene must be a carbon two, so you can drop the two if you want and just say propenoic acid. It's the only possibility. Make sure you do not drop a number if you are in doubt. If you are in doubt, insert the number. Prop-2-enoic acid. Prop-2-enoic acid has the common name acrylic acid. If we add a CH3 off the double bond, so that we now have, and the number is very important here, 2-butenoic or but, you have to put the number in here, because you could have a 3-butenoic acid. So it's still an alpha-beta unsaturated carboxylic acid. It's called crotonoic. Sorry, crotonic, crotonoic. Crotonic acid. Start saying IUPAC names too often, and you start adding oic to the end of everything. It's not crotonoic, it's crotonic. And of course, you could have an aromatic ring here. Here we go. IUPAC name, 3-phenyl. Propenoic acid. And of course, you could say propene, uh, prop 2 enoic acid. And this is cinnamic. Make sure you study the common names as well. You must give me what I ask for. If I ask for IUPAC, you give IUPAC nomenclature. If I ask for the common name, you give me the common nomenclature. Now, when you have rings, remember I pointed out in IUPAC nomenclature, you name the L. Uh, let's actually just erase this. You name in IUPAC nomenclature the ring, and then you add carboxylic acid. So if I drew an aromatic ring with a carboxylic acid off of it, the aromatic ring under IUPAC is named as a benzene. Well, I'm not surprised by that. And so an appropriate IUPAC designation is benzene carboxylic acid. The common name from this molecule common name is benzoic. Now what's interesting about this is 
As has occurred in the past, there are rare occasions where common nomenclature is so used it's adopted by IUPAC as an exception. In this case, benzoic acid is utilized as an acceptable IUPAC name. So indeed, if I ask for an IUPAC name, you can give benzoic acid. But you should note, you should note the origins of the IUPAC name. Because, and this is very important, when we have uh, more substituents off the ring, we get different types of names. For example, What about this molecule? An acceptable IUPAC name would be 4-methyl benzene carboxylic acid. All one word. Okay, so I'm going to put the carboxylic here, but it's all one word. 4-methyl benzene carboxylic acid and then space acid. Note the carboxylic acid okay, is attached to the para position of a toluene. And so this common name, para-toluic, is often used. Now as we get away from benzoic, these, some of these common names are less used in IUPAC, but para-toluic is one that is used. However, I'm going to limit, in this course, benzoic as an acceptable IUPAC, just so we can distinguish between the names. So if I, I will allow you to use benzoic as both IUPAC and common, but if I ask for an IUPAC name for toluic acid, give me 4-methylbenzene carboxylic acid. Notice the 4-benzene, 4 4-methylbenzene 4 carboxylic is one word. What if? I have a hydroxy group off the benzene ring. In other words, a 2-hydroxy. Two 2-hydroxy two benzene carboxylic acid. One word, benzene carboxylic is one word, acid is a separate word. The common name is salicylic acid. Now we continue, can continue with this, and uh, let's try several dicarboxylic acids now based on the ring system. In fact, let's start a new, probably a good thing to do. Okay, and if I have a carboxylic acid here, and I have a carboxylic acid here. And I have an aromatic ring. What's the IUPAC name? IUPAC name for this molecule is 1,2-benzene dicarboxylic acid. All one word. What's the common name? The common name for this molecule is phthalic acid. Actually, it has several common names. Phthalic acid is one of them. 
Sometimes it is called orthophthalic because the two carboxylic acids are ortho to each other. What happens if I have this molecule? Well, the carboxylic acids are not 1, 2, but rather the 1, 3. Well, the IUPAC name is 1, 3. And I'm going to insert it this time. You can say benzene. One three dicarboxylic. Acid. That is how you pack. The uh, common name. is either isophthalic acid or metaphthalic. Both common nomenclatures are used. The ortho meta para designations being more recent. Okay. One uh, very symmetrical and interesting dicarboxylic acid is this guy. The IUPAC name for this, of course, is 1,4-benzene uh, dicarboxylic or benzene 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. Now, you'll notice when you insert the numbers, you drop the E at the end of benzene. That's because it's silent and followed by a hyphen. Um, common names are terephthalic acid, or you could call it para phthalic acid. There we go. Terephthalic or paraphthalic acids. Now, we can sometimes use terminology referring to the carbonyl group as it extends off another substituent, we may, in cases, have to name as substituents the carbonyl attached to some chain. We're in a position to do this now based on our carboxylic acid knowledge. If we extend the chain, Under IUPAC designation, such substituents are called methanol, ethanol, propanol. Butanol, or benzoyl. 
this type of designation is going to be very important when we get to the nomenclature of some of the carboxylic acid derivative molecules. Common names for these types of substituent fragments are formyl, acetol, propionyl, propionyl, butyryl, or benzoyl. Now, I often use the term alpha-beta, and we're continuing when I say uh, terms like alpha-beta unsaturated, uh, um, alpha-beta unsaturated carboxylic acid. You should be comfor comfortable with the de designation uh, that is used. It is a common designation. Uh, if I have a carboxylic acid, with a rather long chain. Let's put a five carbon chain all together. Just as a typical chain. The functional group is localized as the carboxylic acid. And when using alpha beta, the carbon attached to the carboxylic acid is alpha. Next to that is beta, gamma, and then delta. All right? So if I put a substituent on the chain, I can localize that substituent by common nomenclature using the Greek letter system. So a four carbon uh, carboxylic acid is a butyric acid, and I would call this a beta bromo. butyric acid. The IUPAC name, of course, is 3-bromobutanoic acid. All one word. I could, for example, have a molecule like this. If you look at this fragment, common nomenclature would be a two-carbon chain would be an acetic acid. This fragment is an acetyl group. We've had acetyl acetone. We drop the Y L at O, and this common name for this molecule is aceto acetic acid, where the aceto comes from this fragment. That's the aceto, and it is an acetyl group, an acetyl group. Of course, the IUPAC name would be three oxo butanoic acid. Very good. Now, if I draw a molecule like this, because and of course, if we were to name this, this is crotonic acid. Or IUPAC would be butuene oic acid. If I was to localize the carboxylic acid group, we see the double bond is between the alpha and beta carbons. Here's an alpha carbon, beta, gamma. And hence the term alpha, beta, 
unsaturated. Carboxylic acid. Now, that is not its name, but it is an identification of the functional groups in the molecule. If you like, it's classifying the molecule. So an alpha-beta unsaturated carboxylic acid. Both crotonic and this molecule, cinamic, cinamic acids are examples of alpha-beta unsaturated carboxylic acids. And that's cinnamic acid. Okay. Well, there you have a little dose of the nomenclature of carboxylic acids. And we're going to be revisiting carboxylic acid nomenclature and looking at more names as we proceed. And you should note you're responsible for both the IUPAC and common designations. And you should give me the IUPAC names that I have covered as well as the common names, depending on how I would the question. Give me the appropriate answer. What we want to do next is take a quick look at some physical properties of carboxylic acids. Before we begin talking about how they're prepared. Prepared. Physical properties. Mm. Now, <clears throat> carboxylic acids can be drawn so as to bring out the various aspects of structure we'd like to look at. For example, we have I pi bond, this carbon's sp squared, that carbon's sp squared. Because of that, the molecule is planar, trigonal planar, as a matter of fact, at carbon. We also, in the structure, have polar groups. The oxygens are delta minus. And so carbon is delta plus. Consequence of that is a polar molecule. And of course, lastly, as with all oxygens, we get lone pairs. There are lone pairs on the molecule. All of these factors will contribute towards the physical properties. The planarity, polarity, and possession of lone pairs will all influence the physical properties of carboxylic acids. But of greater significance is the presence of hydrogen, this hydrogen, bound to an oxygen. This can lead to hydrogen bonding. The functional group is ideally structured for the formation of two pairs of hydrogen bonds. Because of this, with a hydrogen bonding strength of about 10 kilocals per mole, dimers can form, dimers that are interacting so strongly they can exist even in the gas phase. As a result of extensive hydrogen bonding, carboxylic acids possess higher boiling points than equivalent alkanes or even other carbonyl compounds. For example, if I draw several related molecules, such as this guy, isobutane, with this one, acetone, or this one, isopropyl alcohol, or ethanoic acid. I compare the boiling points 
we see the following trend. Minus 12 degrees C for isobutane, 56 degrees C for acetone, 82.5 degrees for isopropyl alcohol, or 118 degrees Celsius for acetic acid. This higher boiling point found in carboxylic acids is totally due to the optimized hydrogen bonding that can result in the molecules between the lone pairs on the carbonyl and the hydrogen of the OH group. Because of this, carboxylic acid molecules and the extensive hydrogen bonding, they're infinitely soluble in water, as long as the carbon chain's not too long, okay, for short length carbon chain. If the carbon chain gets too long, that solubility begins to drop off, and we've talked about long chain carboxylic acids in the form of fatty acids. Now, one very important property of carboxylic acids are the strong odors. Many of the common names of the acids were derived from the sources which cause some of the more foul odors. For example, butyric acid comes from the Latin butter, butyrum. This is the acid that produces the terrible odor of rancid butter. As a result, uh, very interesting, carboxylic acids account for many of some of the worst smells you'll ever be exposed to. Now, of course, a major consequence of having hydrogen bound to a very electronegative atom as oxygen is acidity. And I can draw an equation where carboxylic acid dissociates into the carboxylic or carboxylate anion. Now this is a greater acidity than that of a typical alcohol simply because it is resonance stabilized. Unlike ethanol, which would have a negative charge on an electronegative atom if it did this, this negative charge is not localized on one oxygen. But rather it's spread over both oxygens. As a result of the resonance stabilization, the negative charge is spread out. And the resonance not only stabilizes it, but contributes to the increased acidity compared to that of alcohols. So if you actually were to look at the orbitals of this, the carbon's sp squared, it would have a 2p orbital. The oxygen here would have a 2p orbital. And of course, the oxygen here would have a 2p orbital. And they all line up. And side to side overlap of this sp squared allows the negative charge to be delocalized over both oxygens. The delocalization of negative charge over two oxygen will stabilize the anion and result in increased acidity. How acidic? Well, if I compare pKa values of, say, alcohols, alcohols don't have the resonance stabilization. If this was ethanol and you took off the proton, you'd have a negative charge on the electronegative oxygen. It's less acidic than phenols. Phenols, remember, could delocalize the negative charge into the aromatic ring, but such delocalization disrupted aromaticity. They're less acidic than carboxylic acids.
And lastly, for comparison, I'll compare it to you know, things like HCl or HNO3, etc. Strong acids. And pKa for alcohols are about 15 to 19. Phenols, the pKa is around 10, approximately. And carboxylic acids, you get around 5. Uh, substituents can take it down even slower. And these stronger acids have pKa's less than 1. So carboxylic acids, around 5, are still relatively weak acids. But with substituents that stabilize the negative charge, you can increase that acidity. Well, that's it for the introduction of carboxylic acids. Next Scribblecast lecture, we're going to look at the preparation of carboxylic acids in a little more detail, and then move on to a consideration of the reactivity. I'm Dr. Brian Lloyd. This is my Scribblecast. I thank you for listening.